okay um, so this is the second part of the ANS uh, drugs so we're gonna do the cholinomyometric drugs so what is cholinomyometric those drugs which are going to mimic the action of the uh, acetylcholine okay so myomatic means mimicry so cholinomyomatic is going to classify into two classes the direct acting and indirect acting okay okay the direct acting drugs are the um, uh, choline esters and alkaloids so uh, choline esters are the acetylcholine bethanocol and carbocol to remember this you need to remember the mnemonic abc acetylcholine bethanocol and carbocol and uh, alkaloids contain the pilocarpine and muscarine okay while the indirect drugs are the reversible as well as the irreversible the reversible um, contain the carbamates which are the physostegmine neostegmine pyridostegmine and atrophonium and rithavastegmine as well and uh, the the irreversible one are also called the organophosphorus compounds i guess it's not visible in the picture uh, the irreversible uh, now one is the organophosphorus compound which contain the parathione, malathione, somon, serine, deflos and ecothiophate. Okay, we're gonna we're going do to do the duration of action of all the uh, cholinomyomatic drugs. So acetylcholine duration of action is 5 to 30 seconds. The bethanocol is 30 minutes to 2 hour. Carbocol is 2 hour. Pilocarpine is 1 to 6 hour. Nicotine is 6 to 8 hours. And vernicillin is... Um, 12 to uh, 24 hour and um, vernicillin is the drug which used to stop which is used to stop a uh, person from smoking okay now if we talk about the um, um, indirect acting so indirect acting um, reversible uh, contain physostegmine, neostegmine, pyridostegmine all I already told you but if we talk about the duration of action so neostegmine and uh, the physostegmine gonna have the duration of action of 30 to minutes to 2 hours the pyridostegmine 4 hours and adrophonium 8 to 10 minutes okay I did the classification uh, there's only left uh, there is only one thing left in the classification that uh, which of the following are intact insecticides so it can come in MCQs that uh, carbaryl uh, um, and uh, propoxure which is also called bygone uh, they are the insecticides okay now we are going to do the acetylcholine um, there was one thing which I left that uh, um, which is not written in parapharmacology but you need to remember it okay um, in direct acting we uh, can also divide the direct acting uh, into um, let me write it over here it's written as direct acting we can also divide it into uh, both muscarinic nicotinic okay in both we're going to have the acetylcholine aracholine and uh, carbocol in muscarinic we're going to have the um, bethanicol and uh, uh, pilocarpin and in nicotinic we are gonna have nicotine nicotinamide and uh, nicotine nicotinamide and vernicillin okay now we're gonna do the acetylcholine so the, i already told you that acetylcholine is going to have function of um and they're gonna have the um, muscarinic as well as the nicotinic action so just to remember uh, the actions so we're gonna remember uh, we're gonna remember this picture in our mind that muscarinic action we're gonna remember i uh, already told you just go from up to down uh, when you look at the person's face first you look at the person's face then you go down to the feet towards the feet so uh, first uh, comes eyes then lungs then heart then git and then urinary bladder so it's gonna have different functions in this organs which we I'm gonna do it and in nicotinic action sorry. 
In nicotinic action, there's going to be CNS action, autonomic ganglia action, and skeletal muscle action, okay? Now, uh, I already told you, we, we're going to go from uh, top to the bottom uh, when, you look, when we look at someone's face. First, we look at someone's face, and then we look at someone's, um, the, like, uh, there's going to be lungs, and then heart, and then GIT, then bladder, okay? So, what happens in eye? This is really important. It, it, like this is the basic questions that gonna be asked in the viva as well as in the uh, university question. So you need to remember this. This is really important. Okay, what happens in the eye? So the acetylcholine, pyrocarpine, and physostigmine. What they gonna do? Uh, they are going to act on M3 receptors. I already told you that uh, in the eyes, uh, M3 receptor is going to be present. Okay. So it's going to act in uh, on M3 receptors and it is going to do three things. First, it is going to cause uh, a contraction of spinter pupillae. When the spinter pupillae will contract, so it will open the tubercular meshwork around the canal of shrimp. When the tubercular meshwork opens around the canal of shrimp, it will in, um, uh, increase the drainage of aqueous tumor from the eye to the outside and reduces the intraocular pressure this is the first thing second it will contract the ciliary muscle and causes a spasm of accommodation okay this was this was the second thing and third it is going to cause the contraction of the ciliary muscle which will cause a relaxation of the suspensory ligament of the lens okay which will cause bulging of the eye and we are we're gonna be able to see the near object the vision fixed for near distance okay okay now we are going to do the um, bronchi the lungs function i already told you that first eye cup then lungs then heart then git and then bladder okay now the second turn is um, lungs the bronchi so it is going to cause the bronchiospasm bronchoconstriction bronchiospasm as well as increase the bronchial secretion okay so that's why we should not give this drug acetylcholine should not be given in asthmatic patient because it will cause the constriction of the bronchi which is already very constricted as well as it, it will increase the secretion so it will make the person's condition more worse okay now we're going to do the heart so what's going to happen in heart it will reduces the heart rate reduces the force of contraction, reduces the AV conduction. So negative chronotropic, inotropic, and dromotropic effect. Okay. In blood vessels, it causes release of the nitric oxide. And because of that, there's going to be vasodilatation. So BP is going to be reduced. Okay. Now, there's going to be GIT. So in GIT, it is going to increase the peristalsis, increase the tone of cut, makes the food move very faster increase the peristalsis increases the tone of cut but uh, as well as increases the git secretions but it will relaxes the spinter okay so makes the defecation really easy as well as the upper spinter upper git spinter is also going to be relaxed Now there's going to be urinary bladder. What happens in urinary bladder? There's going to be, as we know that there's, there is detrusor muscle in the um, ur urinary bladder. So it, it is going to cause the contraction of the detrusor muscle, okay? And relaxation of the trigone, splinters of the trigone. So which will cause urinary urination, okay? And in exocrine, it causes the secretions like increases the salivary, lacrimal, sweat and bronchial and gastric, all the secretion increases all the secretions, okay? Now we're going to do the nicotinic actions. In nicotinic actions, I already told you there's going to be CNS, uh, autonomic ganglia and the skeletal muscle, okay? And autonomic ganglia, so if we give... In normal concentration, I already told you in heart what's gonna happen. There's gonna be negative chronotropic, inotropic, and chronotropic effect. But if you give it in really high concentration, so it is going to cause uh, stimulation of both sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, ganglia. Okay. And when there is gonna be stimulation of both parasympathetic and sympathetic ganglia, 
it will cause increase the blood pressure and tachycardia okay what happened in skeletal muscle increased concentration of the um, acetylcholine will cause uh, the twitching first there's gonna be twitching then there's gonna be uh, fasciculation then there's gonna be uh, prolonged depolarization and ultimately there's gonna be paralysis okay and CNS there's gonna be no exact like there is no proper function in CNS because it does not cross the blood-brain barrier the uh, there's very poor penetration through the blood-brain barrier so there's no not gonna be CNS actions okay and uh, for nicotinic action we need a lot of acetylcholine okay now we're gonna do the bethanocol so bethanocol I already told you that bethanocol um, it has only muscarinic action it does not have the nicotinic action okay and the bethanocol just when the bethanocol comes uh, in your mind just remember two things it is going to cause uh, urinary uh, it is going to call uh, it is going to be used in the post op urinary retention patient as well as used in the paralytic aliases okay so just remember that uh, what happened in the post op urinary uh, retention that uh, the person is, is unable to urinate after the operation so we give bethanicol to make the person urinate okay on, on the other hand when there is paralysis of the ileum okay so we give the person a bethanicol to make the person easily defecate okay on the other uh, what are the rest of the points for bethanicol it is uh, used as a wide um, margin safety like it's very safe it has no nicotinic actions gonna be having only the um, only the muscarinic actions and uh, it is gonna be completely antagonized by atropine clear now we're gonna do the properties like differences of um, the choline esters a b c i already told you acetylcholine bethanocol and carpocol okay so uh, just remember that it can come in paper as well okay and if you have MCQ, so it can come in MCQs as well. So just uh, remember these things. So um, the choline esters. So acetylcholine, it is going to be um, uh, break hydrolyzed by true and pseudocholine esterase, while the carbocholine and bethanocol are resistant to true, true and pseudo uh, are resistant to true and pseudocholine esterase, resistant to true and pseudocholine esterase. Okay? They all have muscarinic action okay but they all do not have nicotinic action why the bathanicol i already told you it does not have nicotinic action now the acetylcholine and bathanicol is completely antagonized by atropine while carbocol is not completely antagonized by atropine okay now if we talk about the actions so the acetylcholine is not mainly used because it, because it has very short duration of action uh, which is 5 to 30 second as well as it has very poor penetration while the carbocol is used for glaucoma and bethanocol is used for post op urinary retention and the paralytic ileus now we are going to do cholinomimetic alkaloids alkaloids and alkaloids i already told you we're gonna have two drugs which are really important while the rest of the drugs are also present which are not that important so the important drugs are the pilocarpine and the muscarine so the py pilocarpine first we're gonna do the action of the pilocarpine so when the um it is the tertiary amine okay it is obtained from plant pilocarpus so this can come in the MCQ that uh, pilocarpine uh, is a uh, tertiary amine and it is taken from the plant which is pilocarpus okay now uh, if you talk about the functions of the pilocarpine so the functions are that the pilocarpine is uh, um, given for acute and the chronic uh, glaucoma the action is very similar that it can uh, cause uh, uh, increase the um, 
it, it will reduce the intraocular pressure how it will reduce the intraocular pressure that it will opens the um, you know, causes the contraction of the spinter pupillae as well as uh, uh, opens the tubercular meshwork around the canal of rim okay now if we talk about the other functions so it reduces the addition between the lens and iris so it is going to be given along with the mitriatex along uh, other than that it is going to be used uh, to reverse the pupillary dilation in patient having a refractive uh, refraction test okay and the fourth point it is, uh, is that it is uh, used as a selegogy to uh, augment these lab secretions to use as a selegogy for lab secretions to increase the lab secretions what were the functions uh, it, it is used in acute and chronic glaucoma it is uh, used to break the addition between the iris and the uh, iris and the lens uh, in uh, along with the mediatics it's given and it's going to uh, be given in ref uh, um, pupillary dilation reverse the pupillary dilation after refractive test as well as, as well as it is used as a cellulogy to augment these slivy secretions augment means to increase the slivy secretions and uh, the adverse effects are really easy just remember uh, the overstimulation of uh, the cholinomyomatic action the cholinergic action that's it in next video we're gonna do the araculin that was the eye function we're gonna do the